Hey everybody, it's Sally. Yes, I'm home in the States for another about five days. It's been crazy busy. I'm sorry I haven't had time to see anybody, but it's just, just too much going on. Uh, I have family priorities, and if I didn't put my family first, I would never hear the end of it, especially from one of my children in particular. Um, so, here we go. I just saw a video, and I wanted to make a comment on it. It's a brilliant video because it's very real, it's very honest, and it's very right on for everybody who has weight loss surgery of some sort as at the end of their loss phase, losing phase and what happens afterwards. And I want to say uh, kudos to Lost and Found Mom. I'm sure you know Lost and Found Mom, uh, Sandra. She is 21 months post-op and her video was named Regain Need Refocus. And she had some brilliant thoughts in this video. First, I want to say, Sandra, you're no different than anybody else. Everyone goes through it to some degree. Some people, you, you, those who go through it probably the most um, honestly probably do not make videos about it. Um, they, I mean, they just don't. They just, they, they can't bring themselves to bring it up. They sort of just disappear. And there is no shame in the phase that is to come. There is no shame. There are pitfalls and there are sidetracks, but this is the rest of your life. It's the rest of our life. And it's never too late to re-steer your course, which you obviously know because you talk about it on your video. But I wanted to say thank you in particular because you brought up some brilliant points and it was like inspired me to even just want to make a video and generally ask people what they think on this. Okay, one of the comments that Sandra made in her video was um, at 21 months, um, the weight loss process, the focus, the uber focus, the 110% focus where everything else is left in the dust basically because I, I speak from my own experience. Um, she's reached a point where uh, that process of weight loss and focus is not much a pri much of a priority anymore. Okay, so let's talk about that. I want to hear from everybody who's out there who's past goal, who's been in maintenance for a while. When did you find maintenance or weight loss focus or weight management focus became not so much a priority anymore? I want you to really stop and think because I think that is a vital question and we all have to ask ourselves, why is it not? When did we get off track? Sandra said another thing about her personality, which I totally related to. She said, you know me, I'm, um, she might not have said it this way, but basically I'm an all or nothing person. When she's all in, she's all in. And that is the way I am too. That's a personality trait. Um, and so, yes, you're all in and you're focused. And then, see, you feel like you you didn't take care of some of the... You know, when you go into this process and you're trying to make sure you do it as best as you can for that first year, year and a half, so you can get the job done. And everybody else has got to take a back seat to some degree because you feel like, this is my time, it's my turn, I've got to focus or I won't get this done. And then you reach that, and then those people start to come back and you feel like, you know, the whole thing of rebalancing and finding... Um, a good balance of family needs and your personal needs. And so sometimes we can swing back to the point where our needs get to be so suppressed again because we don't have the energy and time to focus on our body needs, um, our long-term health needs, that other people's immediate needs become more of a priority and what we, need, we truly need for ourselves become more of a want. And then you maybe start to feel like that's being selfish again. Oh, this goes all the way back to where we first started to lose the weight because we all came from a place where everybody's priorities, everybody's stuff was more important than ours, which is why we ended up the way we did. Never taking care of number one. So you can't let that all drop when you reach goal. There's still, yes, you might have to do a little renegotiation, but never, ever, ever let yourself go to the point where you don't have, it's not a priority for you or the people who love you, for you to find a more balanced approach to lifelong maintenance living. Um, uh, and it's a hard one. I certainly didn't have it all down. I mean, I did pretty well for those first couple of years. And then we moved and then foods were different. 
tasting beer at every pub became a priority. Um, the fun stuff became a priority. And, uh, and then I had the normative regain. Okay, Sandra, you're having the normative regain. It's so interesting you say you got down to 160, but really that was your lowest moment and you couldn't hold on to that. Much like my 128, 129 was a moment, a moment, a breath of a moment in time, not a reality moment. And, um, uh, and it's funny, it's almost like that 128 or that 160.5 was, it's like the bragging rights of, if you met somebody famous, you would just go, oh. you, you, you know, really, it's, it never leaves you. You may not be with that person, but a nanosecond, but you could always say you met so-and-so and so. Oh, I met 128. Oh, it's so exciting. But you can't stay there. It ain't, it ain't reality for most of us. So she's had maybe, really, in reality, 15-pound rebound, which is normative. However, she will admit herself that she had not, um, she her exercise stuff dropped because of some changes in where she was going and it didn't work out as well and she's not had difficulty becoming motivated. Okay, so I'm going to say this about that. Everybody that's in the losing phase, do not eat up to your exercise endeavors because then one day when something happens and you can't get the exercise in and your eating habits are still in the overload, even if it's healthy, whatever, whatever, still, it does have an impact. So for me, that's why I tried to always, I did really hardcore to get there. For me, hardcore, not for hardcore for anybody else. And then I tried to like ease it back, ease it back, ease it back so that the food and the exercise were someplace in balance. And then of course, your tool stops working in the same way and your metabolism kicks back in a little bit less. And then next thing you know, you would have to do more or you'd have to be very, very vigilant about what you're putting in your mouth. So that's really, that's the reality of maintenance. In about two and a half, three years, you better be ready to put on the boxing gloves again. Well, you can glide for a little bit, a little bit. Once you hit goal, if you get hold, goal at 10 months or a year, you got a year to whoop it up. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> you have to go back and remember what it was like when you're kicking ass the first year. So whether that's, that for me, that's kicking ass on how you're, what you're putting in your mouth. Because like my friend Janie always says, what is it you say, Janie? Fitness is at the gym and weight or weight loss or health or, I don't know, something else is in the kitchen. Something we make is in the kitchen. The other thing we make is in the gym. So um, for me, to, for me, to, I did a lot of exercise in the last year trying to figure out what was going on. Could I please force my body to do something again? And it didn't matter if I rode 18 miles on that bicycle. I did not lose any weight. My thighs did not get any firmer. Oh, well. So only until this last fall when I knew I was coming home did I start to kick back on everything super clean. Ate cabbage soup for like two weeks. You know, that's me. I like cabbage soup. It's vegetables anyway. Not as many lentils. Cut back on the drinking. No wine. No bread, no cheese, nothing in anything, just to lose about four pounds. Now, it was not torturous. It wasn't torturous at all. It felt actually very good to know that I could get back control over what I put in my mouth and my cravings. Um, so I just thought I would let everybody know that rebound, again, is normative. But expect it at about two and a half, two to two and a half years for things to start to like, uh-oh, time to, you know, to, um, like I said, put up those boxing gloves again and put on those glasses that help you really see where the slippery slope has become. Okay, I don't want to go on and on about that, but she did say, um, I'm just going to see, I had some notes here, and now I can't see them. So I can't read my handwriting is what the problem is. Yeah, well, if nothing else, I, I highly recommend you guys to go and watch the video. Uh, yeah. And, and to answer my question, if you're in maintenance, when was it that you decided that the, that the highest priority of your life, making sure you got to goal or making sure you were uber vigilant about the best health choices for your future life. And when you were on that high, when did that place of priority slip to good times are rolling? So, or 
time to get back to the family's needs they've put on the back burner long enough or serious issues in family life have occurred elderly parents elder a sick husband anything that might have you know taken away some of that time it doesn't mean you can't get back it doesn't mean you can't get back nobody is judging you at all nobody's judging you live life but remember you had the surgery for a reason and as long as you can be happy in your own skin it doesn't matter if you've had five pounds rebound 15 pounds rebound or 20 pounds rebound it, it's really up to you but where your comfort level is but there's no shame it's just about saying hmm maybe some of my choices weren't so great time to think about it a different way time to revisit the original uh, game plan no shame no shame okay go watch Sandra and give her some support or Sandra you know I'm terrible about Sandra and Sandra in the name and how you say it uh, again she wrote it she this is December 4th and it's lost and found mom I'll see you guys later and hey back to basics is back on the lineup for those who used to watch the basic back to basics channel um, and um, I'm the Monday vlogger for right now so join me and I know for sure Julie Roan Hendricks and Nisi D uh, and uh, Dana and uh, 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 Tanya and uh, 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 I can't remember but there's several oh you know lots of people are going to be floating in as, as a couple of times a month vloggers so Janie will be sticking her head in there too you guys take care and I'll see you later bye